Daddy doesn't have one. I do have a phone. Who did you piss off this time? I get my face smashed in and it's my fault. I called for you. I had the radio on. Corky heard me. Dogs have better hearing. Frank. Life is tough. Sometimes there is nobody there to help you. What happened? Trouble at school. Hey, you should see the other kids. Yeah, but does your mother know? Where is her ladyship? You think she'd be happy to see me? Yeah. <laughs> What are you doing here? Well, I just came to see your beautiful smile. What do you want? I want to see my son. Well, you just saw him. Now leave. Come on, Frank. Let's go inside. Let's go inside. No. Frank is going to stay right here. Give us a chance to catch up, okay, son? Sure, Pop. How the hell did you find us? Well, you're not exactly Miss Inconspicuous. I told you to leave. And I'm telling you the judge ordered you to stay in Chicago and to notify the court and or me if you intended to leave. Well, the judge only knows the law, but I know what's best for my son. Well, to raise him without his father? I only married you out of pity. Promise I made to my mother on her deathbed. God knows what she ever saw in you. I know you never wanted me. But I also know that you never wanted him. You just don't want me to have him. Get the hell out! I love that boy. Something that you will never understand. So you can run away, hide him, whatever your deranged mind can think up. But I promise you this. That if I can't see my son, and the judge hears you skip town, and I get full custody. Fine. Fine. 
Let you know I have to be in the city for work. Can't stay here. But what if you came to visit me every other weekend in Chicago? Really? Pick you up on Saturday. I want you to go now. Can Pop stay for dinner? No, I can't. But it's going to get dark soon. Well, then you better get going. It's OK, all right? We're going to see each other on Saturday. Promise? Well, there's only one way to make a promise. Get up, stand on that side of the fence. Cowboys binding contract. I stand on this side. Now we shake hands. I give you my word. I wish you could stay. Well, you got a hug for you, old man? Oh, man, how'd you get so strong? Chocolate. Chocolate, huh? Well, maybe this will tide you over till Saturday. Just don't let your mom see it. be with you. Thanks, Pop. So long, cowboy. License and registration, please. Is there a problem, officer? I clocked you going 69. 69, huh? Mm-hmm. We were going 55. What's your name, son? Brad, why? Well, Brad, why? I'm talking to Candace here. You see, if I was talking to you, I'd be looking at you, and words would be coming out my mouth, kind of like what's happening right now. You gonna put cuffs on me? Not this time. But I do have your address, so if there's any more misbehaving, I'll pay you a visit. <clears throat> now, you think you can keep out of trouble? Get out of here. Remain in the vehicle. Keep your hands where I can see them. License and registration, please, ma'am. Hey, calm down, lady. Hey, hey, hey. Calm. Hey, hey. Stop. Oh, no, you're hurting me. Stop fighting me. Get off.
You okay, Frank? Fine. Just went 12 rounds with Bonnie and Clyde over there. What do you want, pig? Assaulting a police officer, huh? Maybe it was your dumbass boyfriend. Hey, you leave him alone. You know what happens when you assault a police officer? You go to hell, you asshole. You got a dirty mouth. I'm gonna ask you one more time. Do you know what happens when you assault a police officer? Leave him alone. We're done here. This happens. No! Enough! Ah. No! And this happens. Uh. We're gonna kill the guy! Ah. Stand the hell down! Ziggy, baby, can you hear me? <laughs> you goddamn psycho! You killed him! Ziggy! Uh. Or... This is Motor 1091 requesting immediate medical assistance 10 miles south of Bullhead City, approximately mile post 201 on State Route 95. What the hell is going on here? I had both suspects cuffed on the ground. Both suspects are drunk. Now suspect became aggressive. I just him. He was cuffed on the ground. What's he gonna do, bite your legs? Is all you? Why the hell doesn't that surprise me? Whose kill light is this? Hmm? It's mine. Oh, for God's sake, should both of you get cleaned up and get these two hippies in the back of my car now? Now! Come on! Sure. Tony. You want another one, Frankie? It was a funny girl. She's never been in before. Right. Come here. Why not? Why not come here? Do you always do that? Approach strangers in bars? No. I approach strangers everywhere. Do you always tell people what to do? Generally? Yeah. Does that work? Only every time. Except this time. Gonna dance with me tonight, Frankie, or what? Give me a minute, honey. Now, I want you to pick out a song for me and her to dance to. I think you'll know what she likes. I think she would like any kind of music, any kind of song. She's not picky. You can tell all that just by looking at her. I can tell all that by looking at you. Hello, darling. I love this song. So long, cowboy. Your new love. Are you happy? 
up at Bullhead. Tom Wells happened. Yeah, well, Mason's talking to Tom. I wanted to hear your side of it. I had it all under control, then shit for brains used my kill light to knock the guy's head off. Well, we haven't heard the end of this. Uh, I'll keep you in the loop. Shouldn't you be in school, son? Uh, this is Mitch Myers. Uh, he's a rookie. No shit. Been training down in Phoenix. Good for him. It's a real pleasure to meet you, Officer Shankwitz. The newest member of our team. Lucky us. No, Frank, uh, like you. No. Uh, I'd rather take Tom Wells. Then we had four months additional academy training, and that included self-defense, uh, firearms operations, first aid, uh, hostage negotiation, uh, high-speed driving, traffic control, crowd management, and that was our basic cadet training. Sorry. Listen, Junior, it's tough out there. Risky, dangerous, and unpredictable. But that's enough about me. You want to die tonight? Just keep talking. Yes, sir. Not another word. Except that one. Internal affairs are going to be all over this time. It doesn't look good. Have you found out your report yet? No. Not until I know what you want to do. Well, I had kind of a fun idea. Sounds like you. Let's hear it. That, uh, male suspect doesn't know shit about what happened. What? Hey. What are you talking about? Come here. All right, go. He and Frank went toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Uh -huh. Took a pretty good beating. Got knocked on the head. As far as he knows, old Tom here had nothing to do with it. Okay. Why should I cover your ass? You're not exactly Mr. Ethical. I know, but I'm still your sergeant. So, give me one good reason why I should put my ass on the line for you again. I'll give you three good reasons. A, I'm your best guy. Number two, if I go down, it could be a domino effect. There's only two reasons. Yeah, that's all I got, but I think I made my point. I get it, okay? All right, but this little story of yours better work or you're shit out of luck. Now, the broad. She saw it all. What about her? That's the fun part. In the car, keep your hands right. I can son of a bitch. Hey, stop! Are you okay? You're not hurt? Okay. Hang in there, Frank! Frank? Frank, is that your name? Okay, I I'm gonna remove your helmet. Do not move. I'm taking off your helmet right now. Okay. Get down on the ground. Uh. Come on. Is he all right? He's not breathing. Come on, Frank. This is motor 1333. I have an officer down. Motor 1091 is a 962A. I need medical assistance between Parker and Sienica Springs. Do you copy? Fight. Do you copy? Fight, Frank. 
Okay, Frank, this is Mitch Myers. I need you to hang in there. Help is on its way. Do you have anything? No. He's not breathing. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. 963A. Motor 1091 is a 963A. Frank's gone. What are you doing? Get your things or they'll be left behind. Where are we going? Arizona. Why? It's where I belong. I want to stay here. So you can get your face smashed in? Yeah, you really love it here. I want to see Dad. He's coming to pick me up on Saturday. Not anymore. Why not? Your dad wants you back in Chicago for good. If we stay here, he'll take you away from me, for good. I ain't gonna let that happen. I'm not going. Dad will come for me. You're going. Get in the car. No. Frank, get in the car. No. no. Frank. No! My head! I drove my head! No! No! no. no. Get in the car! No. Get, get in the car! No! Stop it! No. Get in the car! He's not coming. We can't take him on the road with us. Corky, no! Corky! Mom, stop, please! Mom! Mom, stop! I'm sorry! Whatever I did, whatever I did, I'm sorry! Shut up, Frank! Stop it! Corky! No, Frank, you're in Parker, Arizona. Uh, why is this angel kissing me? Don't move, don't move. Keep your eyes on me. Uh, if you insist. Do you remember what happened? Uh, yeah, I'm still paired with a damn rookie. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hey, what are you doing later tonight? He's alive. Motor 1091 is a 962A. <sighs> You had us worried for a minute there, Frank. What's your name? Sally. Thank you, Sally. I'm glad it was you. If he'd kiss me, I don't think he'd come back from that. Did you get the son of a bitch? Yeah, he's cuffed to the bike. Evening, sir. License and registration, please. Stay awake, Frank. Can't have you go into shock. Excuse me, nurse. Mm -hmm. Could you get his doctor for me? Mm-hmm. So, uh, how are you holding up, Frank? Well, I feel about as good as I look. What is it with you? Always getting beat up. Guess I'm in trouble. Huh. Who's the groupie? Oh, this is Kitty Carlisle, new secretary. Just joined us today. Uh, Frank Shankwitz, uh, sometimes prettier, but uh, always just as charming. Pleasure's all mine, Frank. Well, it's quite a grip you got there, Kitty. You gotta fit right in. <sighs> charming and a sense of humor. Well, it's like you know me already. <laughs> well, doctor. Good evening, Frank. I'm Dr. McKinley. You are lucky to be alive. You have a skull fracture and severe bruising of the brain. It's gonna be a long road back for you, but uh, you'll get there with plenty of rest. What are you thinking, like a few weeks? Uh, more like a few months. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna ask you to have someone come stay with you for a week or two and help look after you. Nah, I'm fine. Don't need nobody fussing over me. Well, the risk of you going into shock is very, very high for the next few days, especially at night, so I'm afraid I'm gonna have to insist on it. Kitty? You got your first assignment. 
And she's not staying at my house. I'm not staying at his house. Not without a dinner and a movie first. It's kind of a rule. I'm not staying at his house, period. He's crazy. Frank, the sooner you get better, the sooner you get back to work. And you heard what the doctor said. You need looking after. And Kitty, I want to know who's doing the looking after. Need any help. All right, let's get you set up. Uh, I just want you to rest up and get better. Get you back on that horse. Yeah. Welcome to Arizona's finest. Wow, Frank, you didn't have to tidy up on account of us. I guess if it doesn't work as a cop, you can always go into interior design. That's funny. Uh, quick tour, liquor cabinets over there. Kitchen's through there. Don't get in there much. Probably see more action now. Kid is here. Can I leave? This is going to end badly. No, no, no. You'll be just fine. It's not me I'm worried about. Okay. Bedrooms through this way. Probably see a lot less action now. Kid is here. I'm going to call Cab. No, 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 no. You're going to stay right here. Come on. Well, let me get you set up here, Frank. I want you to rest up. Okay. You lie back there. Now. Is there anything I can get you before I leave? I, uh, yeah, uh, a bottle of scotch and a good cigar would be great about now. Oh, well, I'm sorry, Frank, not gonna happen. Yeah, I guess I'll just lay here with Kitty. Yeah, sorry, Frank, not gonna happen. Look, Frank, I'll get you that drink as soon as you pay me back for that bike you wrecked. Nah. Now, you two, play nice. If you want to go, I'm, I'm not going to stop you. I have no intention of being fired on my very first assignment. But thank you. Hmm. At the hospital, why didn't you tell Eddie we had already met? I didn't want to have to explain it. Why didn't you say anything? Well, when I first saw you there, my first thought was, why is this man following me? Well, you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking this pain medicine is wearing off way too fast. Can I ask you something? I know what you're going to ask me. The answer is no. I'm not allowed to date you. It's against department policy, and they're very strict. Well, thank you for helping me dodge that bullet. Mm-hmm. Do you mind if I ask you a question about your accident? No. No, you don't mind, or no, you don't want me to ask? <sighs> Eddie said... You stopped breathing for a few minutes. Is that true? You know what? If we're gonna talk, let's let's just talk about you, okay? You married? <laughs> You're very direct. Are you a Scorpio? What? A Scorpio. Are you a Scorpio? No. Leo. No. Gemini? No. Taurus. Pisces. I knew it. I knew it. Yeah. This pain medicine's worn off. I'm gonna take a shower. Okay. Yeah. Here. No, don't. I don't need your help. Uh. Ow! Damn it.
Rain, you in here? Frank! Come on, let's go, Frank! Corky! Corky! Atta boy! Hey, where's Frank? Where's Frank, buddy? Where's Frank? Frank! Come on, Corky, come on. Damn that woman! Sheriff's office! My son's been kidnapped. Uh, uh, what's your name, sir? Frank Shankwitz. Uh, how do you spell that? S-H-A-N-K-W-I-T-Z. And your son's name? Uh, same, Frank. Frank Shankwitz, Jr. Do you know who took your son? My wife, uh, my, my ex-wife, Lorraine. So, the boy's with his mother? Yes. It, is that a problem? Sh we have joint custody. She ignored a court order to stay in Chicago. She took him, and now she's on the run again. So, yes, it's a problem. Well, if the boy's with his mother, then uh, it's something for the court and the Chicago police to handle. I if you want to register your son as missing, then we can start a search in 72 hours. They could be halfway around the world by then. Uh, calm down, Mr. Shank. Calm I'm down? Sorry, but that's all Just find my son! Gordon Florence Nightingale. That's a shitty-ass car, so that must be her shitty-ass house. Sit tight. Be right back. Bitch. <laughs> yeah? It's a firecracker, all right. Is she gonna be a problem? No problem, Officer Shankwitz. No problem at all. That's what I like to hear. Let's go.
Frank, what the hell are you doing? I'm playing tennis. What's it look like? It looks like you need to get dressed and shave. You look like a bum. A bum? <laughs> yeah, well, you look like a hooker. You don't like the way I look? No, no, it's perfect. You know, if you want to earn a few bucks on the way home, get out of here. You get out of here. I live here. You're trespassing. Get out. I'm not going anywhere. Shoot the bottle. No way, I'm done. I wasn't asking. Told you. Waste of damn time. Again. I said I'm done. I said again. Take the shot. So who's your date? What makes you think I have a date? You dressed up for me, huh? Why do you care? I just want to know who's stealing my nurse so I can arrest her. I was only assigned to you for a week. Why do you keep coming back? I don't know. I am going to be late for my date. Honey, rise and shine. Come on, up and at him. Ah, what? I'm retired. I don't have to get up and at him. Well, it's 9.30, you know. 9.30? Half the day's gone. Why don't you wake me? Just thought I'd let you get a little beauty sleep. Uh, beauty sleep? Look at this face. I'm already beautiful enough. If I get any more beauty sleep, I'll be gorgeous. You... I'd hurry up and get downstairs if I were you. Why? Because if your head got any bigger, it wouldn't get through the door. <laughs> but it's a cute face. Mm. 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 You. Mm. I know why you're here, Doc. There's nothing to talk about. Well, good afternoon to you too, Frank. Wife and kids are doing fine. Thanks for asking. Sorry, Doc. I just want to get better and get back on the horse. Eddie won't let you get a haircut until he knows you and I have a little talk. So how about it? <sighs> I usually like to pop a few painkillers right about now. You want anything? No, thanks. But I'd like to ask you something. What's it like being dead man walking? I don't need to get into all the deep stuff. I was in a wreck. I survived. I'm getting better. That's all you need to know. Well, there's something else I need to know. 
Why didn't you just stay dead? What are you talking about? In your line of work, you see a lot of death. There's nothing more final. And yet, here you are. I don't know. I got lucky, I guess. Lucky? Lucky is finding a four-leaf clover. You were pronounced dead after three minutes without a pulse. You have to do a lot better than lucky here, Fink. I don't know why I didn't stay dead. You're the doctor. You tell me. I can't give you the answers until I know the questions. I got a question. Yeah, I got a couple of damn good questions. Where's the epiphany? What's the meaning of life? Because I tell you, Doc, all I got out of that night was a wrecked motorcycle, the mother of all migraines, and a nurse who can't cook for shit. You don't need an epiphany or to know the meaning of life. Maybe you survived the accident to find the meaning of your life. I understand you've been spending a lot of time over there. <laughs> Just, you know, checking in every now and then. A few grocery runs, that's all. You be careful, Kitty. The world of a cop is a <laughs> crazy place. So I like to keep things nice and simple around here. Distractions are not welcome, and they won't be tolerated. Clear? I can assure you, Sergeant, there is nothing to worry about. Arrogant, stubborn, ego-driven bachelors are not my thing. Well, good. We're good then. Hey. John. Yeah. <laughs> it's good to see you, my friend. It's good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> this is John Foster, uh, U.S. Customs, uh, Kitty Carlisle, new secretary. Nice to meet you, John. Nice to meet you. <laughs> now, should I file these now, or would you like me to come back oh, later? Oh, no, no. Well, there's no secrets between John and I. We're old buddies. <laughs> uh, sit down, John. Thank you. Thank you. Well, John, it's been a long time. What's new? Well, I have a little request, a little out of the ordinary, but uh, it is what it is. Well, you got my attention. <laughs> Thank you. So my wife has this friend, and she has a son named Michael. He has this obsession with a television series, Chips. Oh, 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 we are well aware of that around here. Our motorcycle guys think they deserve a raise because of that damn show. <laughs> I bet, I bet. So I was hoping maybe, you know, he could come over and uh, see the department, meet some of the guys, and uh, see the motorcycles. Sure, sure. I think we can handle that. Uh, why don't you give Kitty a call next week? We'll set it up. Well, that's the problem. See, Michael, he has leukemia, and he's not expected to live more than a week. Oh, my God. Poor kid. Yeah, so if you could maybe assign a motor officer to uh, show him around and uh, I'll help him with the chips thing. Frank should do it. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I think Frank should do it. Who's Frank? Yeah, he's one of our motor officers. He was in a big wreck a couple of months ago. He's not in the best of health to be dealing with someone like that. Frank can handle it. I was talking about the kid. They've both had hard times. Maybe they can find some common ground there. Is this about Frank or is this about Michael? Maybe both. You think he'd even want to do it? No way. Not a chance. What the hell am I supposed to say to a sick kid? Whatever you would say to a healthy one. Is this Eddie's idea of getting me back to work? I told him you would do it. You volunteered me. Why the hell would you do that? What's the big deal? You hang out with the kid for a few hours, show him your motorcycle, maybe make a few age-appropriate jokes. What are you so afraid of? I'm not afraid of anything. Then what is it, tough guy? Forget it. I'm not doing it. You know, that's a shame because I was really hoping that Michael could have a father figure around the last week of his life, but I guess not. I'll find someone else. Someone strong. Someone like Tom Wells. Wait. What do you mean by father figure? Well, Michael's parents split up. His mom and him moved here, and his dad is still in Illinois. But they're probably right. I mean, what do you know about his life?
I'll do it. Do we need help him out of the car? Maybe we should get a wheelchair. Do we need anything? Maybe some Valium for you. Relax, for God's sake. You're giving me a headache on top of this migraine, which I didn't know was possible until now, so just shut up. Well, that's a negative on the wheelchair. Hi, I'm Michael. You want some gum? Sure, thanks, Michael. I'm Officer Frank. How would you like to... Whoa! Sit on a motorcycle. <laughs> Hi, I'm Marcy, Michael's mom. Officer Frank Shankwitz. Thank you so much for doing this. I haven't seen him this happy and excited yep. in a very long time. Well, I haven't seen anyone this happy to be surrounded by cops. <laughs> All his friends are into superheroes, but Michael worships you guys. Yeah, well, we're just regular heroes. Oh, those are rad. <laughs> yes. Yes, they are. You can touch it if you like. Want to check out the station? We have something for you. Sharp. Hey, hey. <laughs> Real trooper now. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, can I have your attention? I have a special announcement. It's important that I find Officer Michael Allen. That's me! Uh, he's about, oh, this high, blonde hair, uh, loves to chew bubble gum. I'm here! I have these special awards to present him. Uh, it doesn't seem like he's here. Uh, he must be on duty. Uh, Frank, have you seen him? No, haven't seen him, Eddie. I'm over here! What, did I hear something? Officer Michael Allen reporting for duty. <laughs> well, why didn't you say so? I have these for you. <laughs> and every police officer has their own badge. So I'm a real police officer now? Well, that is exactly what you are. Look, Mom, check it out. I can't have a word with you, Frank, real quick. Yeah. When you're done here, we need to head over to Internal Affairs. They need to talk to you. What do they want to talk about? A whole bunch of stuff. Bullhead. What about it? Just need to ask you a few questions about that night. Well, everything's in my report. Nothing's changed. Now, we've been contacted by the suspect's lawyer. Just want to make sure we have all the facts. We just want to know what happened. Nothing to worry about. I'm not worried. Fire away. Well, according to your report, Officer Wells picked up your Kell light when he arrived at the scene. Mm hmm. What about it? Well, did you hand him the light or assist in the attack on the male suspect in any way? Did I hand him the light? You guys met Tom Wells? Could you please just answer the question? No. I did not hand my Kell light to Tom Wells. Is there a problem? According to the suspect, when he regained consciousness, you were standing over him, holding a kale light. That light was covered in blood and issued to you. Could you explain that? Doesn't look good, Frank. You know what looks worse? He's a crazy son of a bitch, smashing in the skull of a handcuffed drunk. Calm down, Frank. We're just asking questions based on the reports and statements that were filed for this incident. Here's a statement for you. I restrained Tom Wells, relieved him of my kale light, which is the only reason this is a brutality charge and not a damn murder case. There are three rules at work. 
Keep your head down, keep your mouth shut, and keep smiling. You got that? Okay, Mom. Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. I was just admiring your presentation. The bed. Pristine. Yeah, of course it is. I did it. Thumb in the rain. You like working here? Sure. I mean, it ain't exactly the Ritz, but... You appreciate the opportunity I've given to you and your boy. We appreciate it. Why? Why don't you show me how much? <laughs> Get back here! You're done in this town! You hear me, you whore! Oh. You okay, ma'am? Who did this to you? Mr. Baxter. Going home, ma'am. Okay, okay, hey, hey, I need two more meatloaves and where's my sausage and eggs? I think somebody's gonna get fired today, huh? How about you, Gringuito? Huh? You wanna get fired today? No, sir. What is this? Huh? You can't even clean the pot, huh? Well, maybe your cook should learn to cook. Hey, what did you say? What did you say? Everything's clean. Go on, check. The meatloaf was overcooked, so it stuck to the pan. The problem is the cooking, not the cleaning. Jose, a diner said the meatloaf's burned, and he's not paying for it. Well, you're burning my food. Jose. Yeah, you're burning my food. Jose. You're costing me money. You're throwing my money away, Caron. You know what? Both of you get out of here. You're fired. Both of you. Vamonos. Vamonos. You okay? What's your name? Frank. Frank. I'm Juan. People around here call me Juan. What happened? doesn't matter. Mom's gonna kill me. What are you doing out so late? I just finished work. Where do you work? I'm a dishwasher. I was a dishwasher at El Toro. No, 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 no. That is not a diner. This is a diner. It's the snow cap. I built it with my own two hands. It's good for you. Hmm? Maybe good for you, too. How? Summer's around the corner. I can use an extra pair of hands. Really? There's one condition, though. What? You have to be able to tell a joke. Priest and a rabbi walk into a bar. <laughs> All right, okay. Start tomorrow, Pancho. Wow. Look, Mom, it 
It's chips. For me? Well, you are a trooper Michael Allen, aren't you? Oh, not, not out here, honey. Take it inside. <laughs> uh. Wow, is a bundle of energy. Yeah, it reminds me of my first day at the Academy. More like last week. Oh, yeah? You're new? Mm. Hasn't been easy. Frank's been busting my chops. <laughs> yeah, we do that for all the rookies. Don't worry. I'll be easier on Michael. Oh, you don't need to do that. He can handle it. <laughs> <laughs> He's the real deal. Look at that. Yeah, when Michael's feeling well enough, he takes his motorcycle down the street and puts tickets on all the cars that are parked on the curb. Maybe we should have parked in the driveway. He's a cop through and through, isn't he? Can I sit on the motorcycle? 10-4, officer. Come on. Pick you up. All right, one, two, three. Oh, you're heavy. Oh, yeah. Hello, Arizona. This is Officer Michael. I'm reporting for duty. Good morning, Officer Michael. I am marking you 10-8. <laughs> Do all police officers get wings? No. These are special. Custom made just for motorcycle cops. I'm the Highway Patrol motorcycle. Now I'm a real cop. Well, let me see what I can do. Really? I'm not making any promises, but I promise. Promise, promise? Come with me. There's only one way to make a promise official. That's a cowboy's binding contract. What's that? You stand on that side of the fence. I stand on this side. And now, we shake hands. I promise you, I'll get you your wings. Thank you, Officer Frank. Do you want to be a police officer more than anything in the world? More than anything in the world? I wish I didn't have to die. That already happened to me once. Really? What was it like? It was peaceful. Nothing to feel scared or sad about. Then why did you come back? Because I had something important to do. What? Help you. You don't have to do that, Officer Frank. Why not? People always feel sorry for me. If they want to help me. But you don't have to help me, Officer Frank. Maybe you're helping me. These are the reports and statements from the Bullhead incident. Officer Tom Wells, Sergeant Mason, the two suspects. This one's yours. It's the only one that's pure fabrication. What the hell are you talking about? Let me see these. By all means. All four are consistent. The same chain of events, the same story. All except yours. Are you crazy? Well, this, this is bullshit. Every goddamn word. I'm going to advise you to be really careful of your choice of words. It's pretty conclusive, Frank. <laughs> They're trying to set me up. We, you can't see that? Our investigation is complete. We're going to submit our findings to the commander. That concludes our meeting. God damn it! <sighs> you know, you should probably leave now before we have to have you removed. Uh, I'm gonna have to let you go. Uh, there's somebody here to see me, and apparently it can't wait. Yeah, bye. I'll get back. Well, you want to talk, or you want to take a leak? You spoken to Mason or Tom Wells? Not today. What's going on? Bullhead. They're screwing me, Eddie. Internal Affairs wants my badge and gun. You should me. All right, all right. Now, calm down. Calm down. Sit. All right, let's have it. We've got it. You want to see me, Sarge? Uh, yes, Kitty, please. Uh, sit down. 
Uh, sit tight, Frank. This involves you, too. What does? Look, I don't know what's going on between you two, but what I do know is I'm about to make it a lot easier. Wait, what is this? I... Kitty, a position just opened up down in Tucson, and I'm recommending you for transfer. It's better money, and it's a great opportunity. Look, Eddie, there's nothing going on between us. Kitty, you leave next month. Frank? I'll talk to Mason. Go. Yes. No, I can wait. So are you going to take the transfer? Eddie wasn't asking. It, it's a good thing. I mean, I can just use some money. It works out for you, too. I mean, I know I know you, so now you don't have to see my face every day. Frank? Uh, look, that was uh, Michael's doctor. He's in a coma. Uh, here. Go. Go. Yes, you are. And I'm your partner. Oh, my God. Mason, it's Frank. We need to talk. 
Hello? Yeah, Kathy, it's Frank. Get me Tom Wells. He just walked by. One second. Yeah, I'll hold. Sorry, Frank, he's not here. What? Oh, you just said he was there. <laughs> Frank Shankwitz? Who wants to know? <laughs> hey, God's up to you. You've been served. What? By who? Throw the shirt off my back? Get off my property before I arrest you for trespassing! Where is he? Mason! Oh, Frank. Frank! 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 What are you doing? What are you doing? What is this? Looks like a subpoena. I'll get your filthy hands off me. Get him off of me now! Frank! Now! Get your hands off. Come here. I've been framed for what happened in Bullhead. And now I'm being sued for a million bucks, and this piece of shit is doing nothing about it. He's thrown me to the dogs. You better start talking, Mason. Sure, Eddie, I'll talk. Frank, you're under investigation for using excessive force on a suspect. That same suspect is suing you for a violation of his civil rights. And this department cannot and will not help you. Now. Both of you assholes, get out of my office. Get out of my office now. Hey, Frank. How are you? Can you talk for a sec? Come here. Tom. I want to talk to you for a second, cowboy. I haven't seen you around much lately. You're not taking my calls. Yeah. But now you want to talk. Sure. Let's talk. This is nice and public. Plenty of witnesses. You're sure you want to help this asshole? Help me? Hey, hey, wait, 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 wait. What the hell is he Stop talking me. about? Hey, come on. Look. Hey, look at me. Do what I say and avoid this termination, OK? Go to hell, Mason. Frank, just hear me out. Your record is impeccable. You're completely clean with a shitload of awards. So making a deal with these guys right now, it's a walk in the park. Come on. I get it. I take one for the team, and this prick walks. How the fuck is that a good deal for me? Stop. Frank, I'm going to recommend suspension without pay. I know. But it's the only way these guys will play ball. Come on. I know it's a blemish on your record. But this way, the termination will go away. You maintain your job, and you're back to it before you know it. Come on, man. It's either this or termination, Frank, to your call. I say I keep my job, and you two go screw yourselves and each other. Well, whatever you want. It's your funeral, pal. We're just trying to help you. Frank. Listen to me. I want you to hear me out one more time. You're finished. You're an idiot, and you're finished. Get out of my sight. Get out of my sight. What's your next play? Get a lawyer or get a new job. Do you know any lawyers? None I can afford. I used up all my sick days after the accident. I'm cleaned out. I might be able to help you out. Uh, I don't want your money. No, that's not what I mean. Oh, but if you need a little, I can't. I said I don't want your damn money. Well, I might know a lawyer. My nose not much good to me. No, he's a buddy of mine. Oh. I've known him my whole life. He's the smartest guy I know. He's a buddy of yours. He can't be that smart. <laughs> What's his name? James Fisher. Mm. He's a junior at a law firm in Phoenix. The money won't be a problem. In fact, he'll probably pay you just to get his first case. His first case? You have a better idea? Get him on the phone. OK, uh, listen up, everybody. In two days, Michael Allen is uh, being buried in Illinois. And I'm sending Frank and Mitch as our representatives to honor Michael as an Arizona trooper. Not a good idea, Eddie. You got something to say, Mason? Frank's suspended. It doesn't look good if he's the best we got, you know? Well, guess what? I don't give a shit what it looks like. He's still a cop, and he's still going. Who are you kidding, Eddie? He's on borrowed time. Look, if you want, we can step into my office and discuss it after this. But for now, I'd like you guys to pass the hat around, and anything you can donate, we would really appreciate. 
Thank you. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Thank you. And thank you. Of course, we don't expect you to give anything because we all know uh, you got deep pockets, but you got short arms. <laughs> Thanks, folks. I'll be here all week. Morning, gentlemen. Frank Shankwitz, Arizona Highway Patrol. Randy Jackson, Illinois State Police. Myers. Joe Garcia, Chicago Police. Thanks for coming today, gentlemen. Listen, we read about this in the newspaper, and we felt obligated we need to be here with you. It means a lot that you did. I can tell you it would mean the world to this young man. We're just proud to be a part of it. And so are we. And if Michael were here, he'd shake both your hands, offer you a piece of gum, and ask for a ride in your patrol car. I think we'd probably give it to him. I'm so glad you could make it. I wouldn't have missed it for the world. Thank you so much for everything. You ready? Frankie, what are you doing? I'm hungry, Ron. I'm so hungry. Well, I'll go make you something. Listen to me. You work here now. That means you eat here now. And real food, not garbage, you understand? I want to help you. And it's okay for you to accept my help. Because when people need help, you give it to them. But how? I'm just a kid. You're not just anything. You're Frank Shankwitz. You can help people. Remember, if someone needs help, you give it to them.
Honey, what happened? What broke? Frank, have you lost your marbles again? I'm looking for the magnifying glass. We have a magnifying glass? Department of Public Safety. Uh, good morning. This is Frank Shankwitz. Frank, it's Kitty. Why are you introducing yourself? It's weird. Well, just being polite. Well, that's a first. No, I think we have a wires crossed here. Uh, my name is Frank Shankwitz, and I believe that my son, Frank Shankwitz Jr., is a police officer there. Uh, why, yes, of course. I'm so sorry. Frank is one of our highway patrol officers. He's actually not here right now. He's in Illinois. Yeah, well, that's why I'm calling. See, I live in Chicago, and I read in the paper about this little boy, and it said that Frank was going to be at his funeral today. And uh, Kiwami. Yeah, he's he's actually there right now. You know what? Why don't I take down your address and phone number, and I will pass them along to him. He should be checking in with us sometime today. Thank you, Kitty. Thank you, uh... Can I ask you something? Anything. What's he like? Good afternoon. Is it? Uh, James Fisher, we spoke on the phone. You must be Clover. Last time we checked. Are you coming in or what? Do I need my attorney here? Or... No, uh, that won't be necessary. All I need is your account of the night you were arrested up at Bullhead. I went over all this with the cops. This won't take long, I... I promise. I was out drinking with my boyfriend. We smoked a little pot. He passed out on the way home, and I had some fun with the cops. And what happened when you were pulled over? I got into a fight with the cop and got arrested. So what? So what, what did he look like? Big guy dressed like a cop. <laughs> uh, can, can you be more specific? Height, uh, weight? Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe 6'2", six, 6'3", six, weight about 220. And uh, what happened to your boyfriend? Apparently he was beaten so badly he almost died. Another pig turned up and beat Ziggy with a flashlight. Can you describe that officer? Shorter. About 5'8", 150, 160 pounds. Black hair, little psycho weasel. Do you know his name by any chance? His name was Fred or something. Frank? Yeah, Frank. And a funny last name. I want to say... Sandwich? Maybe I'm just hungry. Sandwich? Yes. Frank Shankwitz. Do you know him? Uh, I've heard of him. Uh, how do you know that was his name? Another cop told me. Police sergeant came here to the house a few weeks ago. He was there, too, that night up at Bullhead. What's so funny? Oh, nothing. Uh, the, the police officer that arrested you, what color hair did he have? Brown hair, brown mustache. Do you know his name? I don't know. <laughs> Who cares? You know, it's the little shit you need to lock up. So, to clarify, the police officer who beat and nearly killed your boyfriend was about 5'8", black hair, no mustache, and his name was Frank Shankwitz. Is there an echo in here? Yes. Yes. 
That's the cop who arrested us. That's him. He beat Ziggy's ass. Would you be willing to sign this as testimony against him? Hell yeah. You got a pen? Yeah. So what's going on with you and Kitty? Nothing. She's moving to Tucson. It was a true Eddie let her go because you two were, you know. Who told you that? Everyone in the department. Yeah, well, everyone in the department's wrong. She got a promotion, end of story. So why'd you drag me out here then? What is this place? It's nothing. It's nothing good. Well, when we go back to the hotel, we should check back in with the department. Confirm our flights for tomorrow. We know what time we're flying out. A few beers and a bottle of scotch. That's what I'm doing tonight. Well, I'd actually like to see Chicago. It's my first time up here. How about you? Yeah, I was born in Chicago. No way. Then you can show me around, huh? I really don't feel like doing the whole tourist thing tonight, Mitch. So it's not a bar, I don't want to know about it. Wait, how did you end up in Arizona? My mother had a thing for cowboys. Where do you call home? My home's in Arizona. And my heart's still here. I failed you, Freak. You're 11 years old, and you make more money than me. I just keep letting you down. Why don't we go back to Chicago? Dad can help. He'll look after us. No, he can't. Do you remember your father's sister, Auntie Linda? I got this letter from her a few weeks ago. Your father found us. Dad found us? He's coming here? He was driving down here, and it was raining hard, and he got into an accident. He didn't make it. Sorry. Look, I, I want you to live with Juan now. You'll have a much better life without me around to mess things up. I promise. You're gonna be fine. You're gonna be fine.
Frank? Mitch. Kitty, where's Frank? At the bar. Go get him. No way. Why not? He's drinking. So? Imagine trying to take a ham sandwich from a hobo. Tell him it's urgent police business. It's urgent police business. My suspension hearing's pending, not my problem. Suspension hearing pending, not his problem. Stubborn son of a bitch. I'm just telling you what he said. Not you, him. Oh. oh look, can't just wait? Like, what is so important? Mitch, I need you to get a pen and write down this address. Hey. I need you to make sure that Frank gets there tonight. Wait, what's at this address? You will see when you get there. Hey, why the big secret? He's not going to go anywhere unless I tell him where we're going. Tell him he has to go. His life depends on it. You ready to go? Go where? The best goddamn bar in Chicago. Got the address right here. Uh. It's a house. Well, this is the right address. Maybe bars are different in Chicago? Where'd you get that? Kitty. Kitty? How does she know the best bar in Chicago? She just told us we had to come here. Waste of time dragging me all the way out here. I'm heading back. Your life depends on it. What'd you just say? Kitty told me to say that. Whatever this place is, they better have good scotch. Why'd you listen to her anyway? She'll be in Tucson this time next week. You know that? Damn Philly's leaving us. Come on, open up. We want scotch. Come find me. I gotta show you something. You know, you know, for years, I tried everything. You know, every, everything at my disposal, the police and the private investigators, newspapers. It's just, it's just like you and your mother fell off the face of the earth. And I couldn't find you. Arizona. I am so sorry. I stayed in Chicago in case you would try and find me. <laughs> Mom told me you died in a car crash. to you. How'd you get so big? Chocolate. <laughs> Chocolate. Chocolate. There's something for you. <laughs> it 
you know, from, uh, from now on, I'll always be with you, son. We always were, Pa. son has returned. Good to see you, Mitchie. Yeah, good to see you. Come on through, buddy. Frank? Uh, James Fisher, this is Frank Schenkowitz. No Schenkowit. need for the formalities. James, it's a pleasure. Take a seat. Can I get you anything? Drink? Cigar? Uh, maybe later. So, what'd she say? Well, Frank, it's like this. That night up at Bullhead, unless you were 5'8 with black hair and no mustache, I'd say you're in the clear. Good job. <laughs> I could kiss you. Maybe I'll just take that drink. <laughs> Two questions. Why aren't you in Tucson? And how the hell did you get in my house? Make me a drink, and I'll tell you. Hmm. Maybe I'll just put you in cuffs. Are you arresting me, officer? On what charge? Breaking and entering. Breaking and entering. OK, well, that would be the illegal entry into a building with the purpose of committing an offense, right? Mm hmm But see, I haven't committed an offense. Yet. Hmm. Trespassing on private property? The owner of this property actually gave me a key back when I was his nurse. Oh. So, you'll have to take it up with him. Well, I mean, perhaps you could persuade him to drop the charges. Hmm. Yeah. The answer is yes, by the way. What's the question? Do you want to stay the night? Hey, uh, you want to stay the night? No, thanks. I'm not that kind of girl. I'm not going to Tucson. Why not? I'm not going anywhere. What did you say to me? Hey, Mason. Congratulations on your early retirement, huh? Screw you, Eddie. <laughs> Let's give him a round of applause, boys. Thank you for all being here tonight. Uh, after what has been a very difficult year for all of us, it's nice to come together to honor someone's years of good service. We're here to celebrate not only Frank's promotion, but to welcome him back after clearing his good name. So um, without further ado, I think we need to hear from the man of the hour, Detective Frank Shankwitz. Well, I like this hey, you. Uh, thank you, Sarge. Mm -hmm. Now, nah, it's nice to think that you're all here for me. But then I remembered it's an open bar. So, now I'm not a man for speeches, but I got the floor, so I might as well say something. Now, I've been a fighter all my life. And I'm tired of 
not knowing what to fight for. Ever since I was a kid, I've always been on my own. You know, I never had any reason to care about anyone else until now. But now I'm at a crossroads in my life, and I'm choosing which path to take. This year, I'm, I met a young man who taught me what it is to be brave. And I was not expecting that. Being special to someone was never something that uh, I was used to. But Michael, well, Michael thought I was a hero. Now, if I can do it, anyone can be a hero. I'm looking for a new path, a new path of hope, dreams, and everything that's good in this world. A great man once told me that if somebody needs help, give it to him. Now, I never thought that I could make a difference. I was wrong. I've seen it. A simple act of kindness can have a ripple effect. And we helped Michael. And now, with your support, we can help other kids all over the world, one wish at a time. Because I'm starting a nonprofit. What? Now, no way. Uh, are you quitting, Frank? You shitting me? I just made detective. <laughs> wow. oh, good. I just found something new to fight for. Here's my idea. We create a foundation that acts like a kind of genie. We find other kids like Michael. They tell us their wish, and we make them come true. Now, even if it's just for one day, I'll be damned if we don't give them a day of their lives. Now, according to the Arizona Corporation Commission, we need five members to make this happen. That's my signature at the top. Who's with me? No. Come here. Oh, oh, oh. Wow. So, what are you going to call it? Frank Shankwitz, go ahead, make a wish.